हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत पावनोजी एंड यू आर वाचिंग बेसिक केमिस्ट्री वेलकम टू द सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोस ऑन मॉलिक्यूलर सिमेट्री बिफोर आई बिगिन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल टू गेट द नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ माय न्यू वीडियोस This video is an introduction to molecular symmetry and it explains why to study molecular symmetry. Let's begin the video. Symmetry is one idea by which man through the ages have tried to understand and create order, periodicity, beauty and perfection. Most probably the concept of symmetry came into human mind from living matter or living organism like butterfly, human body, leaves, earth. even the ancient monuments like taj mahal india gate and various temples in india are masterpieces of symmetry symmetry is associated with beauty harmony patterns and vice versa higher the symmetry higher is the beauty and law of maximum symmetry exists in nature let's understand the need of learning symmetry in chemistry if we study various molecules crystal systems orbitals or even the molecules with higher symmetry like octahedron isosahedron or dodecahedron it is very important what is the symmetry involved in these molecules if a chemist knows the symmetry involved in the molecule or the space inside the molecule he can introduce new elements and can change the properties of the substance and hence can get the new applications in the world let's understand various reasons to learn molecular symmetry The first reason is dipole moment and symmetry. If we study molecule like platinum tetrachloride, it consists of four chlorine atoms which are at opposite side at equal distance. Therefore, it is a centrosymmetric molecule and do not possess dipole moment. If we study another molecule like boron trichloride, it do not possess center of symmetry, but it possesses two axis of symmetry. That is C2 axis of symmetry and C3 axis of symmetry. these two axes are perpendicular to each other and therefore this molecule do not possess dipole moment and if we study molecule like water it is a non centrosymmetric molecule and possess dipole moment therefore if we study molecular symmetry we can easily identify whether a molecule possesses dipole moment or not let's study how optical activity is associated with symmetry a molecule is said to be optically active if it do not possess center of symmetry plane of symmetry or axis of symmetry this we can understand with the example of thalidomide thalidomide has two types of structures we can say that it has two isomers r isomer and s isomer r thalidomide is used to treat nausea whereas s thalidomide can cause serious birth defects therefore it is very important to study optical activity whether the molecule is r type or s type and this can be studied with the help of molecular symmetry molecular symmetry also helps to understand spectroscopic techniques the first is uv spectroscopy for example if we record the uv spectra of benzene it appears like this this spectrum can be understood by drawing a molecular orbital diagram of benzene the first is ground state termed as a1u which consists of zero nodes The first excited state consists of one node termed as E1g. The second excited state consists of two nodes termed as E2u and finally the last excited state consists of three nodes termed as B2g. Now when we draw an energy level diagram it consists of four energy levels. The first energy level is 1a1g. The second or the first excited state is 1b2u. the second is 1 b1u and the third is 1 e2u so as there are three excited states total three transitions are possible the first transition is from 1 a1g to 1 e2u that is 256 nanometer the second excitation is from 1 a1g to 1 b1u which occurs at 200 nanometer and finally the last transition occurs at 180 nanometer that is from 1 a1g to 1 b2u now among these three transitions the first two transitions are symmetry forbidden 
whereas the last transition is the only transition which is symmetry allowed transition so when we study molecular symmetry it actually helps to understand how many transitions are symmetry allowed and how many transitions are symmetry forbidden and we can predict the uv spectrum of various molecules let's understand the next spectroscopic technique that is ir and raman spectroscopy we know that if a molecule possesses a permanent change in the dipole moment it is ir active whereas if a molecule possesses change in the polarizability it is raman active with the help of molecular symmetry we can predict whether the vibrations are ir active or raman active this could be understood by taking two examples the first one is co2 molecule which possesses center of symmetry when a molecule possesses center of symmetry its ir active vibrations will be raman inactive and raman active vibrations will be ir inactive whereas if the molecule do not possesses center of symmetry like h2o molecule some of the vibrations will be common in ir as well as in raman spectroscopy let's understand the application of molecular symmetry in the next spectroscopic technique that is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy molecular symmetry helps to interpret the nmr spectrum here we can consider two examples of dichlorobenzene the first one is 13 dichlorobenzene where there are three types of protons and therefore we receive three signals in nmr spectrum whereas in case of 12 dichlorobenzene we can see that there are two types of protons which are symmetric therefore we receive two signals in nmr spectrum molecular symmetry not only plays an vital role in studying spectroscopic techniques but it also plays an important role in understanding the structure of molecule here we can understand john teller distortion and can study the structure of molecules for example copper 2 plus ion it has d9 electronic configuration and it has only one unpaired electron now if we place all these electrons in various t2g and eg orbitals if the last electron enters into the dz square orbital we can get two long bonds and four short bonds whereas if the last electron enters into dx square dash y square orbital we get four long bonds and two short bonds in both the cases there is uneven distribution of electrons for example the last electron if it enters into the dz square we get two long bonds and if it enters into dx square dash y square orbital we get four long bonds so that is the importance of molecular symmetry in understanding the structure of molecule molecular symmetry also helps to understand the course of chemical reaction for example if we consider a cycloaddition reaction between ethene and butadiene it is very important to match the symmetry between homo and lumo homo means highest occupied molecular orbital and lumo means lowest unoccupied molecular orbital if homo of one molecule matches its symmetry with lumo of other molecule a chemical reaction can occur whereas if it does not match its symmetry this cycloaddition reaction will not occur i hope you understood the importance of molecular symmetry in chemistry if you like my video click on like do share and subscribe my videos also press the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry thank you